Hey everyone, welcome to my workspace. My name is Anna and I'm an amateur artist who's been exploring painting for a couple of years now. Um, I discovered um, art videos and tutorials during lockdown, like all of us, we were all looking for something to do with our time. So I watched hours of, of tutorials on fluid art and uh, on watercolor and acrylic painting. And I decided that it was worth the investment to to uh, to give something a go. So my first fascination was with fluid art. And I went out and bought paints and canvas and pouring paint. And I poured on canvas after canvas and I couldn't get the results similar to what was in the tutorials. So it was getting very expensive to paint and then scrape off and repaint and that sort of thing. So I was inspired by a couple of uh, watercolour artists who did the most amazing tutorials. And the reason that I thought they were amazing was because they were encouraging. They were calm. The tutors would say, it's OK if you make a mistake, let the paint tell the story. And, you know, this is your creation, not mine. So, you know, the expectation sometimes when we do these tutorials is that we will create something exactly like the, the painting that the tutor created. And it's never going to be that way because paint is paint and, and your interpretation is, is slightly different. So I guess what I got out of that was, you know, be yourself, create for yourself get pleasure out of the process and if somebody else enjoys it that's wonderful so two years later and over 400 sketches and um, paintings along the way i wanted to share a little bit of what, what i've learned i have no formal training but my goal is to inspire you to pick up a paintbrush or a mouse in this case and just play explore and enjoy the experience this is the first in a, a series on digital drawing. I've only just recently decided to venture into digital work and I find it lots of fun. Uh, and partly because when you make a mistake, there is a redo button or undo button. And the other thing I like about it is there's no cleaning up afterwards. and you know, that's kind of a good thing. You're not sitting there, you know, scrubbing paint off your fingers or looking down and finding you've got paint all over your clothes and that sort of thing. So I hope you enjoy this series and please feel free to add your comments or questions in the, in the comments below. And at the end of the video, you'll find a bunch of resources that'll help you begin. The hardest part of any journey is taking the first step and saying, well, I'm just going to give it a go and, ha and see what happens. The seri series will be based on a free digital drawing pro program that I've found to be easy for a beginner and it has enough tools to be able to create amazing art. The next series planned will be some live painting demos using watercolour and acrylic paints and also using the brushes and tools that are in the free program. So if you're ready to begin, I'm ready to begin. So in, in this program, we're going to be looking at a few things. The first thing is what is digital art? And then a little overview of the digital drawing apps that are available to you and I'm emphasizing the free ones so you don't have to be spending a lot of money to experiment on something. I'm going to be doing an overview of the program that I started with which is Critter. Critter is a open source um, software and it has just about all the tools you could need um, to begin. I mean after that you can certainly move on to other programs like Blender or Photoshop or some of the Corel products are fantastic. Um, then we'll be looking at the tools and brushes that are um, 
contained in that program. And then we're going to be looking at applying the basic principles of art. I found that you need an, a, an understanding of some of the terms that people use and also the, the, the process of creating art. It's different for different mediums and um, an understanding of how to construct um, your project and create an engaging and interesting um, piece of art that people, when they see it, will get what you're trying to communicate. And the last thing we'll be looking at is just play. That is the point of all of this. It's to encourage you to just take a step and have a play around and see what happens. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing in, in an introduction is the question, is painting or drawing using a computer cheating? And I had somebody sort of say, well, you know, you've got more talent than that, and you, you know, than, than what? Um, digital art is not easy. It's um, something where, from, that I've found that I can express more from my imagination than I can with paint and canvas. And the reason I say that is I don't have the skill in paint and canvas on paint and canvas, um, but at least in digital art, I can undo and redo and try and express what I'm trying to express. So art is, is defined as the expression or application of a, the artist's creative skill and imagination. And typically in visual forms or in sculptures like you know, or on canvas. Um, and it's an expression of your imagination or it's an expression of something that the artist wants to communicate. Art is, like all of the, the arts, is a form of communication. You have an idea that you want to express or an opinion you want to express or just uh, an emotion that you want to express. And it's a way of putting it down and communicating it to people. When I, the very first painting that I did, well, actually not the very first, but the first painting that I did with a brush was to me just orange and brown and it didn't come out the way I expected or I hoped. And I was going to paint over it, scrape it off and paint over it. But I did post it to, to my Facebook page and a friend saw it and said, oh my goodness, you can't paint over that. I just love it. Can I have it if you're going to paint over that? And it was a lesson for me to, to understand that, yes, I want to produce something that, that I like, but also people connect to what you do in different ways. It spoke to her of the bushfires that we had in 2019 and the impact it had on people. And so just understand that people will see different things or see things differently to you. So paint for yourself, create for yourself and get joy from that process. And then an added bonus is if somebody sees it and says, I like that. I like that because I connect with that. So let's start with part one. So what is digital art? It's, it's a comparison between traditional painting and, and electronic, using electronic devices. When it can be your phone, your computer, a tablet. You may have lots of equipment. You may have no equipment. You may just have your finger. Um, traditional painters paint on a surface, such as a canvas or paper or um, wood, just about anything. And the digital artist paints on a screen. Traditional painters also must be intentional. And the reason I say that is 
when you go into painting with on a canvas with a, with a brush you need to have an idea of what you're looking to produce at the end even with abstract painting understanding the principles of focus and color and and composition and that sort of thing is needed you can't just slap paint on a on a piece of paper and um, without you know without thought because that's what the artist is trying to do is trying to convey something through their work um, so there needs to be an in, in, intent on what you plan to do is it a landscape a portrait an abstract um, a collage or something like that so intention uh, digital artists have the freedom to alter their paintings throughout the entire process if you don't like something you can go back get rid of that and start again or you've got an eraser that you can erase cleanly and you know begin again um, traditional mediums require equipment paint brushes canvases and paper and the cost can be prohibitive for some I have a, a philosophy of reuse repurpose and reimagine and so with that I have been doing a lot of stalking around the recycling center around um, charity stores um, secondhand stores and you know the dollar store the you know the, the cheap paints and that sort of thing it's good to start with something that you can afford even if it's your kids poster paints it's something to start with you can work and get some fairly decent watercolors and acry uh, <laughs> acrylic sets um, at these cheaper stores um, you know pay less or the the uh, reject store or things like that they're not top top quality paints but they're a start and they will give you the freedom to get in there and just give it a go so um, that's you know when you're putting paint to paper there are some incredible um, watercolors that come from China that have incredible pigment pigments and amazing colors so you know it's keep your eye out for that also keep your eye out for frames at um, the recycling center where you can frame your work and that's satisfying to have something that you've created framed and on the wall um, digital artist um, also has zero cleanup which is my favorite and mess and it requires little more than a computer and software so you know it's it's a good comparison uh, it's a good start too when particularly when you're learning to understand the techniques it's a good way to start so the question is what do I need to begin you need hardware you don't need to buy special equipment you can use your mouse or a touchpad or your phone or your tablet uh, that you already have you don't have to go out and buy special equipment when you're first starting out there are two main ways to do a digital painting um, you can use a graphics tablet connected to a computer um, and the second way is with a tablet with a touch screen tablet I use a Wacom drawing tablet which works as a mouse you can set um, buttons for your double click and, and that sort of thing and it comes with a pen and it's pressure sensitive which means when you're drawing you get much better effect than you do with just a mouse it's okay to start with a mouse you at least you'll get to learn to control um, the cursor as it moves around the screen but you won't get the same effect you won't get the touch that you get when you using a pencil or a 
uh, a brush. Um, ta tablets can have um, pressure sensitivity and tilt response, meaning that you know the angle of that you hold the stylus will give you a different effect. Um, there's uh, some links here to some of the other um, drawing pads and pens and so forth that you can use, and you can feel free to explore those. Um, some tablets can be used for digital painting, including iPads and Microsoft Surface and all that sort of thing. So I am not um, selling any products or anything like that. I'm not linked in any way to any product. I'm just telling you that the equipment that I use and feel free to explore what suits you best. Um, you know, not everyone has the, the budget to go out and buy a $4,000 computer. So when you're starting, start off simple. And if it piques your passion, just do what you need to do. Um, anyway, let's move on. Now here we're looking at what software do I need. Um, it ranges from programs that are intended to mimic traditional painting, like Corel Painter, and to also there's image manipulation programs like Adobe Photoshop. We've all heard of Photoshop. We all understand airbrushing for models and fixing faults and making yourself look thinner and all that sort of stuff. You're there using similar tools to what's in an art program, but in particular um, programs that are designed for artists, uh, you can use them um, on photos, but you, you can also create from scratch. Um, the good thing or the interesting thing that I found was that I could trace a photograph that I particularly liked and have a, a background when you know when I felt not confident I'm not confident in painting people for example but if I can put one layer down of a photograph and trace it on another layer and take the photograph out then I'm free to create so we'll be looking at that later on um, there's different benefits to each digital painting program so it depends on how you want to work and which tools are important to you. If you particularly like a range of colours or a range of brushes or a particular style, um, then you, know, you can explore. And the majority of them do have a free trial period. Um, it also depends on the cost of the programs. Um, with many switch to a sub subscription um, based on a single one-off purchase. So Clip Studio Paint, for example, former, formerly, I think it's Man Manji Studio. I don't know how to pronounce it, but anyway, that one you can start off free and then you, you move to a prescription. Uh, a prescription. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, first day with my new mouth. A subscription. Um, many of the digital painting softwares for computers um, have an app version as well um, for standalone tablets, iPads, etc. And you can have a look and explore any, anything that's underlined is a link, so you can go and have a look. Um, just be aware that sometimes when you sign up, um, you may have to um subscribe and they you know once the, your trial period is over they may start billing you so just be aware of that and uh, my advice would be to start with an open source program so the question most people ask is how can i try this sort of art for free uh, there's m lots of free options available um, your computer comes with generic paint tools like uh, Microsoft Paint, 3D Paint, 3D Viewer. Um, also, the, your particular brand of computer may also come with, um, you know, photo manipulation program or art programs or paint programs. 
Um, you can use them on Windows and also Apple comes with it uh, with its own software as well. Um, you can consider using some of the free apps um, that are available on the game store. Okay, so we're looking at the some of the apps and software that's available for free. Some of them I've used, some of them I haven't. Um, the uh, clip art studio I've used and I found that reasonably easy to use. GIMP, when you open that up, it can be a little overwhelming, especially if you haven't used the digital art program before. Um, so, you know, it's free and it is useful, but I haven't really gone much into that because my choice number three, Critter, is free, open source, and it has regular updates, regular update to brushes and, and so forth and tools. And I found it great and the support is good and the information the updates that you get is is good and you can create pretty decent works using critter art weaver i've tried and sketchpad i that's quite a simple one and i quite enjoyed using that astropad i haven't used adobe illustrator adobe is the top of the line for the majority of, of um, art programs that and corel um, Adobe have a few free um, little add-ons that you can get to enhance your photographs and sometimes when you've done a piece of art on paper you can take a photograph of it and enhance it using an Adobe product and then um, you know, work with that. Inkscape I haven't used or Vector um, I have used Adobe Photoshop and again the interf that's the upmarket version of um, of Critter and you know it's it's fantastic we all have heard of Photoshop and the the things that it can do um, I don't use it for photo manipulation but it does have some great tools and there are lots of different um, parts uh, to the Adobe experience so it's not just Photoshop but they've also got art pro art specific programs and um, tools for artists so you know that's where you can graduate grad graduate to um, just remember when you sign up for something for the free trial that you don't get hit with the full price because some of them can be pretty pretty pricey um, when it comes to to actually getting the full version okay on to the next so in section three we're going to be looking at the tools that are in critter and once you familiar familiarize yourself with that you'll find when you go back into the more advanced art programs that you will at least know where to look for the tools that you need and you'll be able to recognize stuff that you don't see in Critter. So we'll go through the, um, a little bit of information about what Critter is. So I'm not going to go through in detail here how can I try it for free. The information is there on the screen and you can pause and, and, and uh, download it if you want. Um, there's a yellow link there for the download. Please don't download it from any other site other than the actual Critter site, um, just for your own safety. So it features over 100 brushes, um, versatile color selector. It's got a, a, a great um, color wheel. And in the choices, you've got a lot of different shades on the warm side and the cool side. So it's it's very handy for just um, picking your colors and trying to match colors as well. It's got tools to um, where you can sample um, a color out of a, out of a photograph or something like that and use that color. Um, it's got a professional line and curve drawing tool, which I've found very useful because I can't draw a circle. 
Um, it's also got um, tools on the right hand side that you can put in to suit yourself. Yeah, um, when you when I do the demonstration, you'll see how I set mine up, but you may want more emphasis on brushes and and or colors or um, some of the editing tools. Um, it's got a smart patch tool for adding for your add-ons and for some compatibility with other programs. So in topic four, we're going to be continuing with the Critter Overview and looking at some of the tools and brushes and where you can find help um, if you get stuck or if you've got a question and you want to do something in particular. Um, Critter comes with an excellent resource manual and uh, it's very, very handy. I've, I've certainly solved some issues myself with you know understanding what certain things do so it's very helpful okay so this is um, some of the brushes erasers blenders stamps and tools that are available um, to you on Krita don't want to erase it looks complicated just don't run away have a look at them you'll see you know you'll soon understand whether it's a pencil or a, a piece of charcoal or charcoal pencil watercolor watercolor with a wash you know all of those things uh, and then there's some animation specific ones as well and i've found in the beginning that the um, the stamps were handy i mean you know in five seconds flat you can st stamp a mountain range and be already halfway onto your um, your painting, at least the layout. Um, you've also got quill pens if you like to do a little calligraphy, and uh, some other fun tools, you know, that to create effects and texture on your on your drawing. It won't be just a flat um, flat drawing. Okay, so this is what your desktop will look like. Or how I've got mine set up and you'll see on the right hand side you've got the um, color wheel you've got brushes you've got layers and on the left hand side you've got all your tools it's a pretty standard layout it looks a little intimidating but have a look through um, the tutorials that uh, Krita provide for you they're very very well done and they they don't talk too fast. I found that a lot of tutorials on software, the person giving the tutorial knows what they're doing, so they're off ten steps ahead of you. Going, I don't know where to find the file. I don't know where to find that brush. I can't find it. Yeah. So, which is me. <laughs> you may be a little quicker than me, but so there's a, a a link there to go to the tutorials if you want to go through those. Now, as I said in the beginning, I'm just going to do a very brief overall discussion of the basic principles of art. It's important that you understand how to create your design and how to make a painting that will engage your audience. Now, I, you know, people say, I'm not an artist. I can't even draw a stick figure, you know. When I first started looking at the YouTube videos and tutorials, they would use words foreign to me like line, shape, form, space, texture, value, um, focal point. And I'm oh, I just like, what is a value? And what is, you know, wh why do we have to do texture? And what is form? You know, it, it's basically the building blocks of your painting. Values, of course, are the shades you use. Understanding the color wheel. You know, this is something I thought I didn't need to know. I just use what colors I like. But there is some method to the madness. There's harmony in a well-balanced color layout. Uh, texture gives the, your painting interest. And you can do textures on a digital platform. 
um, you can, you know, some of the brushes are three brushes together. There's using your palette knives and things like that. So all the tools that are available in real life to paint on canvas are available in your digital painting. Understanding how you use your space is really important too. So check out that page that you've got a link to there and for a crash course in the artist basics. I won't go through this in detail, but this is the elements of design and the principles of design. Understanding shapes, lines, the form, the shape of the objects. When you're looking at a person's face, do you see dark shadows? Do you see light spots, etc.? So it's um, there are plenty of videos on that, and I recommend that you look those up. Don't overload yourself, but just understand that you need some idea of the elements of design. Texture is important. It gives your painting interest. It gives a shape. It gives it depth. Um, and how you use the space is important as well. Do you want blank canvas? Do you want to cover the entire canvas? Value is the different shades. Go outside and look at a cloud. Is it a white fluffy cotton ball? No, it's got blue, it's got black, it's got maybe even a little green in it. Look at the shape of clouds. Look at a thunderstorm or a photo of a thunderstorm and look at the different shades. Um, when you're doing watercolour, you use a, a blue that is actually a combination of black and blue. And when you put it on the water base, it's, it separates out and it makes the realistic colours. Um, so understanding the different shades of the colours that you're using and also looking at where it sits on the colour wheels. What are the two colours next to it and what is the colour opposite? The, the, uh, you'll, when you look that up on Google and look for the elements of design and value in particular, there's an explanation as to why you don't put blue and yellow in the sky. You may want a lovely yellow sun, but when you put that in, blue and yellow make green. So you end up with a green sky. So understanding how you use your colours and what you know what shades you want what values you want whether you want it light and bright or dark and moody um, a black and white photo isn't black and white it is shades of gray um, looking at patterns at a regular arrangement of things um, contrast is is important what colors do you put next to each other to create um, light and shade things um, emphasis now some people you know call it a focal point what is what you're trying to communicate should be the focus of what you're you're going to be drawing so think of that first and think what is going to draw the per person's eyes in when they're looking at it what is going to, to grab their attention first? Is it a black and white painting with just one red leaf? And you're trying to communicate something like loneliness in a crowd or whatever. You know. um, so having that focal point is the red leaf. But then you need to be able to keep the person's interest so that they want to not only look at what you focused on but then want to explore um, you know there's a principle for example of having things fake leaning into the center so that if it leans out they look at your focus and their eyes are drawn out of the painting so they don't spend much time looking at it balance is color tone your composition etc um, proportion and scale, understanding perspective, understanding that things are lighter and smaller as they are away in the distance 
And as they come forward towards you, they're larger and darker. Your foreground is dark. Again, take note when you're outside. Check out the colours of things. Harmony is important just so that it doesn't jar the eyes, unless you intentionally want to draw someone's attention to something that is not in harmony. And rhythm and movement have some sort of movement in in your creations and that goes for abstract or any really any uh, creation that you make just keep some sort of order and then when you understand those then you can start breaking the rules and creating something that you enjoy creating and uh, hopefully somebody else will So I love this quote from Walt Disney, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. And that's probably a good piece of advice for me because apparently I talk too much. So the last point that I want to talk about is just play. Okay, so don't be afraid of making mistakes. Um, often we, as I said earlier on, that we see a painting that somebody's created and they've done a demonstration on it and it's a paint along thing and you think, well, you know, it says it's for beginners and you start doing it and then you end up trying to replicate every little brush stroke. Um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, each mistake that you make, like not saving your work, for example, um, will teach you a valuable lesson and that way you'll remember um, and next time you create something um, will come up and you go oh yeah I've come across that before there's no such thing as perfection if you seek perfection you won't be satisfied satisfied ever with what you create the world isn't perfect even our faces aren't perfect. We have a good side and a bad side, apparently. Or so on, we've been told. Um, you know, there is no perfection, but there is beauty in imperfection. So if you remember the, the painter with uh, Bob Ross, who used to have a television show, and he'd say, we have a happy little cloud here, and then we've got a big tree that lives in our painting. The key to what he says is, it's your world. It's your creation. He doesn't want you to paint like him. He wants you to paint like you. And that's something to remember. You are unique and you are beginning to explore something that you may be nervous to try or whatever, but you don't have to be perfect at it. You have to be satisfied with what you produce and it will communicate that to other people when they look at it. So let's summarize. One, take your time. There's no hurry. You don't have to you know, do everything all in, in one go. Understand the basics. It really is good to go through the basics of design and understand what the principles are. It doesn't mean that you, you, know, you have to follow the rules, but it's a good thing to understand why the rules exist and they exist so that when the person that is looking at your art looks at it it will make sense to them our brains are wired to be logical so what we don't see our brains create um, that's another story but just understand the basics so your paintings will make sense and then you can start exploring Experiment. Try one new thing at a time. Uh, and you don't have to perfect it, but try it. Um, the next video that I'm going to do will be us playing, playing with the brushes, playing with the colours and creating an abstract piece of work that will make sense to the viewer's eyes. So take your time, understand the basics, and experiment one thing at a time.
makes you thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this and to me stumbling over my words and so forth. But uh, you can contact me on this email address and you'll find me on various social media. I've uh, referenced the, um, the sources that I have and the references, uh, Wikipedia and, and so forth. Um, now, there's one point I want to make, and that is copyright. I did mention tracing a photo and, and that sort of thing. Now you, you need to be aware of what you use as your reference if you're going to be doing real life subjects, people, um, you know, scenery, photographs, etc. You would need to be aware of the ownership of what you're using as a reference. Um, obviously, what's in your head is free of charge and <laughs> is copyright, your copyright. If you're looking for some inspiration, um, all the art in this presentation comes from Unsplash and it's, it's work that I've created using Unsplash photos. Unsplash is a site where you can use all the content freely as an artist because the artist or photographer has given permission um, to use their work uh, in order for artists to have resources. And, you know, we, we can't exactly travel to Paris to paint a picture of the Eiffel Tower. But if you look up on that, I, on Unsplash, you'll see that there are Eiffel Tower photos. So search by keyword. The one thing they ask is that you give the original work or artist credit. Um, they are high quality photographs. They don't accept low resolution. Um, they only accept high resolution. So you, you've got something to work from and, you know, type in interesting people, interesting faces, um, exotic beauty, um, a, a place in, in the world. And you'll find there are thousands of photos there and it's a good resource to start. Um, all the other references I've placed hyperlinks to. Ah, so I'm new to all this, so I guess I'm obliged to give you my social links. I have a Facebook group and a Buxton Art. I have an Instagram page and a Flickr page and hopefully those links there work. Um, if you're interested in exploring artificial intelligence artists, Night Cafe is a fun place to start. I have a Tumblr account and a YouTube account, a, a new YouTube channel, which has nothing much on it except a, a couple of fails. <laughs> but I will be putting this and uh, other tutorials on my YouTube channel. So you can follow along at your own. Um, in your own time. So thank you again for joining me. I appreciate your time and please feel free to comment, ask questions in the, the comments below and I will see you next time. Good night.